Tonight, the U.S. Central Command Twitter account gets hacked. There's a proposal to ban Snapchat and Wolf Blitzer with a drone. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 251 for Monday, January 12th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Squarespace. Creating and editing your website is easier than ever using the redesigned interface Squarespace 7. With integrations from Getty Images, Google Apps, new templates, and more. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Hackers calling themselves the Cyber Caliphate hijacked the Twitter and YouTube accounts of the U.S. Central Command today. The accounts displayed messages of allegiance to the ISIS terrorist group, as well as militant Islam propaganda and threats against the U.S. military, including a list of contact information for senior military personnel. The Central Command, also known as CENTCOM, is the Pentagon's Florida-based command for the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and the bombing of ISIS tar targets in Iraq and Syria. The first hacker tweet appeared at approximately 9.30 a.m. Pacific time while the president was wrapping up a speech on cybersecurity at the FTC. It took Twitter about 40 minutes to suspend the account, and the YouTube account was brought under control shortly after that. It's important to note that CENTCOM itself was not compromised, according to a Pentagon spokesperson. While the hackers claim to have hacked both CENTCOM servers and the personal devices of persons serving in the military, the hackers appear to have merely cracked the passwords of two social media accounts. The personnel documents published online were already in the public domain. At the same time all of this was happening, President Obama was talking to the FTC about online security for consumers and students. Here to discuss Obama's new proposal is Elise Hugh, technology and culture reporter at NPR. Thanks for joining us, Elise. Of course. Hi, Megan. So Obama has been giving us some previews of the State of the Union address, and today at the Federal Trade Commission, he proposed the Personal Data Notification and Protection Act. What can you tell us about that? So nobody can forget what happened during the holiday season um, a couple of years ago when up to 110 million customers were affected by this massive data breach at Target, um, credit card numbers, uh, and, and a lot of inconveniences uh, had to take place because credit card numbers and other personal information was breached. And so in reaction to this and then the other sort of um, recent cyber hacks that we've seen, like the Sony hack, the president wants to um, shore up some of the uh, notification laws following these sorts of breaches. For example, after a company like Neiman Marcus, which was also hacked, or, or Target, Home Depot, any of these companies, after they're hacked, there's only a patchwork of laws um, regarding disclosure of these hacks to customers. And so uh, what this act would do would essentially establish a federal standard saying that you have um, a 30-day window to disclose what's happened. Um, this helps because right now this is only state by state, but then there's a lot of critics that say this just isn't strong enough. Right. So they're just asking for more transparency. That's right. It would be more transparency. And hopefully um, this disclosure would then allow for consumers and companies to sort of deal with what happened, the ramifications of the breach faster, because um, there's plenty of uh, reports out there that there's uh, other companies, retail retailers like Target uh, or hotel chains, things like that, that have been breached. And they just, because they're not required to notify us, have never disclosed what happened. And so there's a lot of states that do require this. And um, this would just sort, sort of like allow for a federal standard. The problem in this case, though, Megan, is that Critics say there's some states that actually have stronger laws existing already than a 30-day notifi notification. And so it actually, a federal standard would actually water down some of the existing states' uh, laws on this. Right. So that the other thing that he talked about was privacy for students in the classroom. And I think that's the same case, too, because I know California already has some privacy laws, but some other states don't. Now, I have kids in school. They're always coming home telling me about new sites or apps that their teachers are using. And inevitably, the next day, I'll see that site in the news, and it will have some sort of security breach. So are, are schools actually prepared to address privacy concerns that come with these apps? 
I think uh, that would really depend a uh, school board or school district by school district. This this major, more sweeping federal legislation that President Obama is calling for actually just has to do with how data of students can be used. And then it essentially would say that student data can only be used for educational purposes and not later to market to them. So um, if education companies do have a hold of a student's age, um, what school they go to, what neighborhood they live in, if they have siblings, things like that, things that um, educators would know about a student, that this sort of information isn't used to micro-target you, to sell you more things, um, which seems like a pretty reasonable protection in this day and age. Right. So no, right now there's, there's no protection on a national level? Uh, it's, again, state by state, so patchwork, you know, patchwork of these laws. Uh, California is actually the first and only state to formally write something like this. So California obviously has this protection from using education data for marketing, but this would, uh, federal law would actually model itself after what California has already done. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, Elise. I know that you'll be leaving the country soon, but I hope that you will still come back and join us. Of course, I'll just be on the other side of the clock. Right, and I wanted to remind you that Tech News Tonight is a little later, so it's a reasonable time for you to come on. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Well, that was Elise Hu, technology and culture reporter for NPR. And where can people follow you online, Elise? Prolific tweeter, so you can follow me on Twitter at Elise W-H-O, and I have a Facebook page. You can easily just Google my name and find it. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. Coming up, find out why one high-profile Brit hates WhatsApp and you will not believe what some people will do for the iPhone 6. But first, this episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com. Squarespace recently launched the completely redesigned interface Squarespace 7. Now creating your own professional website or online portfolio is even easier. Here's why you'll love Squarespace. Live editing on one screen, made, making changes is clearer and simpler with no more toggling to the preview mode. There are 14 new designs giving you over 30 to choose from. Squarespace also offers templates designed for specific professions like musicians, artists, architects, restaurants, weddings, and e-commerce site. One template I really like is called Fulton. It features long scrolling pages with background images and full width galleries and albums. It's perfect for agencies, stores, restaurants, bands, and wedding sites. Cover Pages is new with Squarespace 7. You can choose from 10 new templates, perfect for creating quick landing pages for your brand or your personal identity. And for just $10 each, you can pick from thousands of professional Getty images and use them on your site. E-commerce is, of course, available for all subscription plans. And there are mobile apps. There's the Portfolio, Note, Metric, and Blog mobile apps, which means you can make changes to your website no matter where you are. The Note and Blog apps are now on Android, too. It's incredibly easy to use. And if you want some help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24-7. It's inexpensive, too. It starts at just $8 a month, and Squarespace takes care of hosting, so you don't have to. Plus, you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required, and start building your website right this red-hot second. When you sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use offer code TECHNIGHT to get 10% off. And if you already use Squarespace, existing customers can go to the Settings tab to activate all the new features. We thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace. Start here, go anywhere. Now on to a few more star stories we're following today. UK Prime Minister David Cameron has promised a new law that would either ban apps that encrypt messages or force the creators of such apps to provide a backdoor for the UK government. Such a ban would include Apple's iMessage, Snapchat, and Facebook's WhatsApp. Cameron said in a speech this week that there should be no means of communication which we cannot read. The backdoor option would put the UK into the same league as Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, which forced BlackBerry to provide such a backdoor starting in 2010. Cameron invoked last week's terrorist attack on the French magazine Charlie Hebdo as a reason for the proposed law. Cameron's Conservative Party, of course, would have to win the upcoming May 7th general election in order to pursue such legislation. Well, strap Wolf Blitzer to a drone. CNN and the Federal Aviation Administration just signed a research agreement to allow the 24-hour cable news network to use unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, in news gathering. News organizations have been one of the loudest critics of the FAA's commercial drone ban, saying it violates the First Amendment rights of journalists. Back in May, the New York Times, Associated Press, and others filed a brief with the NTSB saying reports on traffic, 
Hurricane, wildfires, and crop yields could all be told more safely and cost-effectively with the use of UAVs. No word on how soon TWIT or other news organizations will get permission or when we'll start seeing drone footage on CNN, but chances are we will not be waiting long. Big wins for streaming media at last night's Golden Globes. Amazon won their first ever Golden Globe Award for the new original series, Transparent. The show garnered wins for Best TV Series and Best Actor, which went to Jeffrey Tambor, Transparent star. And even though streaming giant Netflix only won one award, Best Actor for Kevin Spacey in House of Cards, it's nice to see original programming from Netflix and Amazon holding their own against the cable giants. And it's great news for us binge watchers. And finally, we know iPhones are a hot item in China. So how does one smuggle in 94 iPhone 6s? Why not strap them to your body? According to China's Sina News, one man traveling from Hong Kong did just this. Officials noticed the man was walking oddly with a strange posture and he appeared stiff. Once in security, his carry-on passed inspection without problem, but he set off the metal detector. You think? If you do the math, the average iPhone 6 weighs 4.6 ounces, meaning his smartphone suit came in just over 27 pounds. Now imagine if they were 94 iPads. That's something I would like to see. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And please don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.